Hi, and welcome to Holy Trinity Thought for the Day. My name's Nick Weir, and I'm the vicar here. Today, we're in Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 17. Let me begin with a prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Help us to listen to your word today. Keep us from all danger and enable us to live as you would have us live. Amen. Sometimes when someone is successful, they can go off the rails a bit. I'm sure you can all think of a, of a sports star or an actor, or perhaps even a friend of yours who was really successful and they don't handle it very well. Well, it can happen to Christians too. As we engage in the great mission of proclaiming the gospel that Jesus gives us, the question in our thoughts today is, how do we deal with success in mission? In the last thought for the day, we were looking at a time when Jesus gave 72 disciples a training mission and he prepared them for possible failure. And we thought about failure last time. But in fact, this training mission was a big success. Look at verse 17. Uh, we, we get what happens when they return from the mission. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Jesus replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. If you get involved in Jesus' mission, there will be times when you feel and you know that God is at work. And these disciples, they, they saw evil retreat before them. They felt Jesus' power so tangibly. And we too, in a less dramatic way, can know the thrill of mission, the joys of seeing someone come to faith or grow wonderfully in their faith, the satisfaction of showing social concern as we proclaim Christ. When being a vicar is hard, there is one thing that keeps me going more than anything else. It's when I think of those who have been wonderfully changed by Christ in such a way that only the Lord could have done it. There will be thrilling success if you get involved in Jesus's mission. But how do you cope with it? Verse 19, Jesus said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. There's Jesus' simple solution to success. Don't rejoice in your power, rather rejoice in your position. Or put it this way, don't rejoice that God has used you, rather rejoice that God has saved you. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Rejoice that you're part of God's people. To use a sporting analogy, the greatest privilege is to, to pull on the team's kit and be part of the team. That's way more important than individual glory in a particular match. You see, if you're a Christian, you know, you know in your heart that it was God's amazing kindness that saved you, that called you to the team, that gave you help to respond to his call. So we mustn't get carried away by success or by feeling important in his church. Rejoice in him and his salvation only. And if, you, if you've not yet said yes to Jesus, well, even today, you can. You can turn from living to self and agree to join his team. Well, let's pray as we come to a close. And we're going to use the words that Jesus says next in verse 21, which remind us that the results of the mission are all in God's hands. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. 
all things have been committed to me by my father. No one knows who the son is except the father and no one knows who the father is except the son and those to whom the son chooses to reveal him. Lord, we thank you whenever you have used us to do good. But most of all, we thank you for your amazing kindness to have us in your people. Help us to rejoice greatly in that reality today. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs>